last night we had uh, Hermanson versus Strickland. Um, not the most high stakes as far as rankings goes for a main event, but Strickland at least is on a um, he's on a train right now. He's he's climbing the rankings. Um, Hermanson's kind of been relegated to almost like a gatekeeper type position after the loss to Vittori. Um, so Strickland's been talking like, oh, he needs to get to the belt, needs to get to the belt. It's the first time he's been focused on getting to the belt. And uh, yeah, I don't know. The performance last night, I don't know if it's really worth getting a title shot uh, on. He did uh, he did a fantastic job of, of getting hit and, and not getting hit, or hitting and not getting hit, I should say. So uh, who's, the, who's the British guy on the commentary, Will? Because you sound a little bit like him. I know you don't watch the commentary most often, but what's that guy's name? Do you know? Bisping, Michael Bisping. Yeah, Bisping. He does a great job. They talk about um, – I mean, I really enjoyed the commentary from the team today because they didn't stray from the action very often. They had some jokes that kept it light, lighthearted. But he did mention that in about the fourth round. He's saying, okay, we know you've won this fight. We know that you can have great defense, defending the takedown, taking the jab and controlling it with just your main jab, his right hand, checking all those leg kicks with his lead leg, which I think was his left leg. Yeah, um, yeah. He got he got uh, bloodied up on the nose, but other than that, it was like a flawless performance, ne- seemingly. But he was saying, I don't think you're going to be jumping the line with a performance like this. He wants him to go take it, take the fight, yeah. not just win the fight and cruise it. The next contender isn't going to be cruising to the championship. They got to take their shot, um, which is what I'm hearing from you. But as someone... Uh, and I'll let you finish your your side in a, in a moment. Yeah. But as someone that has never watched this man fight ever before, um, what I took away from it was like, does this guy sweat? Like, does this guy <laughs> like is he human? Is he breathing hard? This guy was seemed so in control. He seemed like like he was fighting in there with his son that he's teaching how to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's just yeah. like, come on, hit me at the end, hit me. Go straight at the middle. He's yelling at him. Calls him a yeah. pussy. You can't say that on on uh, UFC airways, but we can't hear. This is R rated yeah. adults only. Uh, I'm Adult. gonna rate it with an explicit tag when we put the show up later. But story of the fight X X X. Yeah, exactly. Every takedown, he was just uh, knocking him off, knocking his hands away, standing him up. I think he even got he had to get the underhooks out one time. But uh, whoa, just, look at it was, Rich. Yeah, the no, hey man, you watch underhooks. eleven fights in a row and you pick up on some of the terminology. Okay. <laughs> But, okay, uh, but did you watch? Did you watch from the first fight of the night to the main event, or did yeah, you watch? Yeah, I didn't from the do the Ramiro down? way. I watched. There you uh, go. Yeah, so the the last fight, the one we're talking about uh, in my mind, is the most fresh. But I got notes on everything else, so I'm not gonna let you guys down. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I was like, this guy is so cool. And then they mentioned, uh, "Are you a Sean Strickland fan? Do you seem like you would be?" Me? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big Sean. Strickland. So going into this fight, uh, and and shout out, you touched on um, the commentary team sticking with the actual fight itself. And if anybody's listened to me in the past, Felder, Bisming, Fitzgerald is my dream team. When Felder or Fitzgerald went live on Instagram before the before the event, mm-hmm. and he's and he like pans over to the desk and it's Bisping and Felder, and I was like, rejoice! Nice, I think they're nice, by nice. far the most professional. They're, they're the best crew, I think. And Ramiro uh, hashtag DC hater. They even threw some shade at, at uh, Bisping threw shade at, at DC in the broadcast. He's like, they were talking about wrestling, and he's like, somebody was like. Uh, I know Daniel Cormier is not here to give us his Olympic wrestling experience. And then uh, Bisping is like, oh, I'm glad he's not here. I yeah. don't want to hear his awesome breakdowns of wrestling. And it was a joke, but, you know, I was like, somebody appreciates that for sure. No Rogan. Yeah. So, um, so Bisping uh, – or, or sir, uh, Strickland, I'm a big Strickland fan. He's kind of leaning into this whole psychopath thing. So he's getting like <laughs> – he's kind of starting to like get the, a fan base, right? Um, and and – but – it comes with the flip side, right? It's a double edged. There's pros and cons because there's a lot of people who are like, "God, this guy's so cringy. He's talking all this shit. Like, he's a psychopath. It seems fake." Blah blah blah. The reality is, he's getting interest, right? And that's what you need to do, especially if you're trying to get a title shot. You need people interested in you. Uh, HLB Comer points it's it out saying. right there. <laughs> yeah, his interviews have been. A ble- I mean, the guy's hilarious. And uh, before he now, now he's kind of bit. He's in the spotlight, right? Now he's in the main event and all this stuff. But before, I mean, he's always kind of had the same style where uh, he just kind of walks you down. He just keeps walking towards you. His feet are are super close together. It's like the opposite of what what you get taught, right? You don't, especially in MMA. In boxing, that's more okay because there's no threat of a takedown. But when your feet are so close together, your legs are close together, it's easy for someone to just grab that double leg, pull your legs out, and you're down. Mm. But he just like... 
he just walks forward with just like a, a such disregard for anything you might be able to throw his way. And exactly, Romero. So he does a really good job of uh, every time you throw towards him, he's blocking like out here, right? Like he, he blocks before they even get close. And that's yeah, what you were that's saying, something like, that I was like, I don't think I've seen this all night. His blocks yeah. were coming up here, and I'm like, I don't even think I ever noticed someone blocking so far away from their body. It's usually when they're near the face or by their head. They uh, shut up, right? Yeah. And, uh, shout out to Ramiro. He's mentioning his footwork is, is enough to avoid shots just by themselves, deflecting the punches that he mentioned. But yeah, just the, the footwork and having his leg off the ground, of course, to absorb it without having to plant and take wear on the knees or the joints or whatever, which mm-hmm. was crazy. And uh, and just like, and then the final thing before I interrupt you, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to interrupt you for the second time. Definitely not the final time. Time. But yeah. they mentioned during the uh, broadcast, do you even, I don't know if this is true, but maybe it's it's playing into the psychopath or his persona, or it could be true. They say, do you even lift weights? Do you even run? And he's like, yeah. no, I just fight I just all fall. the time. And his, his body type is so like kind of lean, but not skinny mm-hmm. and not bulked up uh, uh, compared to Pure you know, cardio. the other middleweights uh, that I think are fighting next week. Adesanya, right? And then mm-hmm. and Whitaker, some, some other guy, yeah, yeah Whitaker, <laughs> some other guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like those guys are, are bulky, and, and I noticed. I'm like these guys, this guy's the same weight as them, so I wonder if that has something to do with it—the fact that he never well, runs or lifts anything heavy. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like that body style is is by far the most efficient body style. You look at like the Nick Diaz, Nate, Nate Diaz. They're known for their cardio. Same kind of thing, right? They're slim, right? They're not like bulky, but they're also not like flabby. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's like a they're just cardio machines. And going into this, I thought if Hermanson can take this fight to the ground, like it's a wrap. Hermanson's so good on the ground. Like st- that's what you have to do to beat Strickland, right? You got to get him down. But lately, Hermanson, I actually picked Hermanson to win this fight, but uh, I, I, I should have known coming in. He's struggled lately on his entries for takedowns. Mm-hmm. Um, he really, he shoots from a really far, he shoots from really far away. He doesn't set it up with his punches. Uh, he just kind of reaches, grabs you, and tries to take you down. And he hasn't really been able to get the success that he needs for his takedowns lately. Yeah, and I should have known that that Strickland would be able would be able to keep it standing. Um, the, but the big thing is with Strickland, Romero touches on a little bit. He's got like most people have one layer of defense, right? You have to penetrate that one layer. Strickland, the first first step is he's so close, his feet are so close that he can kind of hop back and slide out. Right, his legs aren't spread yet. He he mm-hmm. isn't. He yeah, isn't spread across. He's kind of springed up, ready to do it. Yeah, so he, he can, doesn't got to so, gather his feet. Yeah, so the first thing you have to penetrate is his evasion backwards. Once you do that, now that he's back and out of range, the guard comes up far out. Right, he's framing mm-hmm. these punches, and that that's so discouraging because you, your first couple you're going to whiff because he's he's stepping back, and then the second couple, second flurry, he's going to block out. You have to just keep pressuring him. Like the only way to beat him with that style is to just bully through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A dude, do it. that I have such an apt comparison. And Ramiro's going to be laughing in a moment when he reads, when he <laughs> listens to this. And I'll get to that in just a moment. I got like three layers here. So yeah, one, like, uh, Ramiro deepest. has a comment that I'm going to read, but I'm not going to give it the dignity of going on screen. He says that he's trained in Miyagi Do from yeah, uh, Wax on Wax Off. Yeah, Wax on Wax Off <laughs> from Cobra Kai. We're not going to put that on screen, but he says less muscle requiring <laughs> oxygen. So okay, we're going to get that out of the way right now. But you mentioned um, that shooting for takedowns in some of the other fights I watched earlier in the card tonight, and sure elsewhere, I made comments on the fact that some of these other fighters have such amazing. Uh, shoots for takedowns Entries. from such a far yeah. distance. So they launch exactly with their whole body. About. Just whole body. I was like, man, you're almost laid out. I was like, man, that's wonderful. And that's something that I didn't see from Hermanson today. Yeah. Or when I was like this a spear. Um, you want to be like a spear. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then uh, on top of that, I'm going to relate that. So I'm wearing the story of the fight merch the shirt right here that we have uh <laughs> that we send out to some of our guests uh, like a year fighter. years past which is great and it's got the street fighter font on there and in games like street fighter there's an element uh when you're trying to get to your opponent if they're going to backdash it's going to beat your strikes that are when you're face up with each other and to beat the backdash you have to chase them all the way down and you have to be looking specifically for that and if he's not ready if his camp didn't prepare him for that you're going to get something like that you saw uh in this uh main event which kind of crazy yeah well, it, it, it's similar to like back in the day when Anderson Silva had his reign. When it finally came to an end, the reason he was so successful is because he would he would slip a few punches. You would get discouraged. You'd stop throwing, and he'd counter. He'd rip you. 
when he finally did get knocked out, he was taunting a little bit, right? But that's what he used to always, that's what he always did. It's because Chris Weidman just kept throwing. He didn't get discouraged on the missing, on the whiffing. He just mm. kept throwing. And eventually you'll close that distance. Yeah. And that's what I was looking and for that- Hermanson to do. And he just he kept getting discouraged every time he'd frame his shots. Dude, and that's and, the uh, third thing uh, that I forgot mm-hmm. to mention just now. When you're playing somebody or you're fighting someone, I guess, in real life that has terrific defense, it is discouraging, and it makes you second-guess yeah. even your first attempt. And then, mm-hmm. you know, they just they live off it. They feed off that. Kind of like HLB yeah. Comer's uh, comment right here. Jack mm-hmm. was never winning, uh, Jack Hermanson. His game plan had no plan B, so he had no workaround. And then yeah. he hates talking smack. And that gets in your head uh, in yeah. fighting games and fighting in real life or any competition. The guy your that heart can take starts it, racing a little bit. He <laughs> says that. Uh, yep, exactly. And then uh, you, it's just another thing for you to think about other than what you're trying to focus on. And then he says that Sean Strickland lives for that shit. So uh, yeah. I agree completely, man. We got a good trifecta going. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> but uh, the viewers. <laughs> the other thing, too, is I forgot to mention it, that there really is three layers of defense because the offense can be defense, too. And, and the first before the evasion is that jab that let that his lead hand was so good the whole night. He really didn't have to throw anything other than the lead hand. Mm-hmm. I mean, you come in, you get you get stopped with a jab. That makes you think twice about coming in. If you if you if you don't get stopped by the jab, he's going to he's going to evade. Right. Moving backwards. And then if you even go through that. He's still going to frame you. So there's those three layers. You have to get past the jab. You have to get past the footwork. Then you have to get past the framing. And most people are just going to give up. And that's kind of, I mean, you don't want to say give up, right? It's not necessarily mm-hmm. giving up, but talk about discouraging. Hermanson, I thought, I did think Hermanson won the first and the fifth round. Um, uh, I'm not sure about not- the fifth round. I definitely wasn't scoring it on my own, but I was admiring how ever at the start of every round, he was really trying to gear up and get a flurry going. Uh, but when that stymied, like that just fed back into the discouragement, uh, a yeah. little bit less tentative and less effective, a little more tentative, less effective. But uh, it was still uh, a little bit inspiring to see, like, this guy's not giving up. And then, at yeah, the end, yeah. But then at the end, when he's like, hit me right in the middle, right in the middle, he's like squaring up uh, with Strickland. Man, yeah. that, was, that was some movie it, stuff. <laughs> it's funny, though, because like Strickland talks all this shit, right? About how he wants to be the first person to like kill someone in the, in the, in the cage and like wow. he's like going in there to kill people and stuff. And then he just like. <laughs> He just evades the whole fight and jabs the whole fight. <laughs> it's like you're, you're trying to kill somebody, somebody with, with a jab. thousand jabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, funny, man. man. But yeah. also, I love that that he's like pointing at the middle and he's like, he's like, "Come on, hit me, pussy, stand mm-hmm. in the middle." Let's, let's and, he, and as he's moving backwards, yeah, it's like, bro, uh, exactly. <laughs> so funny. I think the guy's classic, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he could probably he probably doesn't get a title shot off of this. He's gonna need to do one more. Maybe against Vittori, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm exci- I'm always excited to see him fight. Yeah, uh, that, that's Ramiro says all I have that for the the, uh, the jab is like a piston. He also commented mm-hmm. that he gave Hermanson the first, and then second through the fifth for Strickland. If you're watching this later on or live, feel free to comment what you thought the rounds were scored as we bring it up. I definitely don't have an opinion. Uh, in this <laughs> extent, so you guys can fill in for me. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment whenever you can. And yeah. did you mention that's all you had for this fight? Other than Sal Diamato gave uh, Hermanson the win. Oh, uh, who was that? <laughs> Sal Diamato. He's one of the judges. Oh, okay, <laughs> one of the okay. judges gave it. It was a split decision. Oh, okay. He had uh, he had Hermanson winning the first, the third, and the fifth, which is fucking crazy. But it's Sal, Sal Diamato's kind of, if you're not familiar, he, he's kind of like that. <laughs> Classic Sal Ramiro says. Hey, everybody. Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, Don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. uh, And don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. uh, And you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.